1960 saw the first full season of a new type of racing in this country, Formula Junior, new cars and new drivers who were to provide some of the most exciting racing of the year. We'd heard much of the Italian Stangolini with its front engine layout, but our efforts with front engine cars were not quite so successful. It soon became obvious that the main contenders for the motor racing Formula Junior Championship were the Cooper and the Lotus, both rear engine cars. The Lotus, with its small frontal area and light weight, was only one answer to the formula. The Gemini favoured an engine in the front, but Coopers stayed with their rear engine design. Lola, Envoy, Gemini, an exciting prospect for the battles ahead. The formula requires that standard production engines be used and Lotus employ the new Ford Anglia engine with twin choke Weber carburettors. Coopers fit the Austin A40 unit, also with a Weber. The Gemini was built and raced by the checkered flag stable and Ian Raby produced the rear-engined Envoy. The Lola, designed by Broadley, and the Elva, designed by Nichols, both well-known in sports car racing. This, unfortunately, was turned down by the scrutineers. Production engines had to be used, but chassis could be designed from scratch. Brakes could be outboard, cut away for extra cooling, or inboard, heavily ribbed. Carburetors, some chose SUs with ram pipes and spent many a happy hour getting them in balance. Others preferred the twin choke Weber. All cars were water cooled you poured the water in at the top and it came out at the bottom. These then were the cars, but what about the drivers? World champion motorcyclist John Surtees joined the car racing boys at the wheel of a Cooper. Jeff Duke, also a champion motorcyclist, was successful with the Gemini. Dennis Taylor also took to Formula Junior Keith Ballisat, well-known rally driver, and Ian Raby tries everything. And of course, the well-known big game hunter was there to keep us in the picture. But it was Trevor Taylor and Jim Clark in their Lotuses who were to set the pace. And so, dressed to kill, the Formula Junior Brigade turned up at Brands Hatch for the international meeting on August the 27th. Somebody buying a racing car by instalments. Twenty-two Formula Junior cars came out for the start of the John Davy Trophy, the eleventh event to count for the Motor Racing Championship. The flag's up, and they're away. Coming into the bottom straight is the fastest traffic jam you've ever seen. The watches are on the leaders and it's a scorching pace. Second time round, and it's Ashdown's Lola with McKee in the Lotus a car's length behind. On the fourth lap, it's McKee in the lead with Ash down second as they go down into the bottom straight. But by half distance, McKee's in the pits and the lead goes to Trevor Taylor, Lotus. 
The Formula Junior cars are showing their handling qualities on this tricky circuit. Here in slow motion, Dennis Taylor in the Lola. Uberoff, Lotus and the leader, Trevor Taylor, beginning to lap the back markers. Surtees, Cooper, now in third place, with the field well spread out. And Taylor's given the ease up signal after having broken the Formula Junior lap record. Last lap and Taylor's ten seconds ahead. The John Davy Trophy goes to Taylor at an average speed of over 85 miles an hour. In second place, Jim Clark. Well, we seem to have got the bugs out of that. This win puts Taylor well in the lead for the Motor Racing Formula Junior Championship. The Gold Cup meeting at Alton Park saw a large entry of Formula Junior machines. By now there was no question about it. Lotus were on winning form. A perfect day as cars are prepared in the paddock. The standard of preparation is very high and it's unusual for a Formula Junior machine to drop out through mechanical failure. I know it goes on here somewhere. Some were super confident. They didn't unwrap the cars until the five minute signal. Shouldn't you be preparing the car or something? Daddy, why's all that oil coming out of the bottom? While the Formula Junior drivers prepared for their race, the Formula One boys were showing how it should be done. Ken Tyrrell with the Cooper and the very pretty Caravelle. It's first right at the end of the straight, followed by a couple of bends, and then go straight on till you come to some trees. Chris Summers, Lotus. And so to the start, with 28 cars lined up. Number 32, Trevor Taylor. Number 33, Peter Arundel, both in Lotuses. Two minutes to go. Number 64 is Proctor. Number 31, Jim Clark. Number 37, McKee. One minute to go. And they're away, four abreast into the first bend. Coming down into Cascades, it's Clark in the lead, followed by Proctor and Arundel, all in lotuses, with the pack beginning to spread out already.
First time at Lodge Corner is Clark Arundel Proctor. The order's the same at Cascades, but Clark's pulling away. Nobody can match the pace set by Clark in the Lotus and he sets up a new junior lap record at over 89 miles an hour. The pace is too hot for Uveroff's Lotus and he comes in with overheating troubles. Meanwhile, Clark continues to break all records and is soon lapping the tail enders. Lower down the field, individual battles are being fought. Number 42 is Major Malik in his U2. By half distance, it was obvious that no one was making any impression on the leaders. But there was no easing up with the race average in the upper 80s. Seen here in slow motion is McKee in the Lotus and Fenning in the Venom. Looks like hard work. Major Malik again. Clark is beckoned fast as he laps a slower car and McKee goes through fast in fifth place. Fenning is still working to stay on the tarmac and Barisat takes a clean line through Cascades. Now the watches are on Clark as he goes into his last lap. The chequered flag is ready and nothing can stop him now. And he goes over the line, an easy winner ahead of Trevor Taylor. Silverstone, the British Empire Trophy, last of the season's Formula Junior events and certainly the wettest. As Jim Clark was ineligible, for this event, it didn't count towards the championship, and the final result placed Clark and Taylor, both in Lotuses, equal first for the motor racing Formula Junior Championship. This was more like motor boating than motor racing, but it did serve to show the extremely fine handling qualities of these racing cars, which had, in one short summer, put Britain on top in international Formula Junior. And so, as drivers indulged in the fastest mobile shower bath they'd ever had, the British Empire Trophy closed the Formula Junior season for 1960. At the end of the day, eager heads turned to watch next year's Formula One machines in a secret practice session.